Real quick before the video starts, I just want to say that Progress Daily Spring is officially launching on April 1st. So in about 20 days-ish or so, so mark your calendars, it's going to be the biggest, bestest launch we've had yet with new clothing, new product. It's very exciting. You can follow the Instagram at Progress Daily if you want a fun community place to hang out with and get all these daily consistent updates and interactive content, very community driven, lots of amazing skateboarding on it. Tune in on this channel, tune into the Instagram and April 1st. Enjoy the video. I know, the title of this video already sounds so pretentious. Like you have the money to pay more for an expensive skate park than a cheap skate park, but this is a message for the cities who always wanna go the cheaper route. I've been wanting to skate this park for a while, but a lot of people would technically consider it a bad park, AKA a prefab skate park to where everything is just pre-made. So while looking up these parks, I found this very interesting article called Mobile Skate Park Advocate, Top Five Reasons Not to Go prefab with any city, etc. This was an article written by Robert McClendon from Mobile, Alabama, because they're trying to build a skate park. But before I get into those five reasons, I want to skate the park, warm up, test out all the boundaries, but I will add this little antidote that he said. So generally there are two ways to build a skate park. You can sculpt the landscape, build concrete obstacles over the resulting contours. These are poured in place skate parks. That's what they're called when they're like big, elaborate, beautiful, poured in place. And then you have places like this, which is pour a flat concrete slab, even though that looks like a really fun concrete slab. The obstacles, anything from ramps to stairs, can be made of metal, metal, uh, or precast concrete, but they are always built off site and bolted into the surface. These parts are typically referred to as prefab or modular. So let's skate this prefab park and we'll get back to those five reasons. <music> extremely windy and sunny day. I feel like my face is slightly burning off of my scalp, which is fine. Uh, I am going to read those five reviews now. I had, to tr sorry, I'm like winding down from the hype of what that session was, because it was super fun. And you know what? I didn't even bother skating that whole area over here, because you know what? There's just no reason to. I understand how this thing is gonna go. The, the flat part on top is too small. The ramp is too slippery. The handrail is too weird. The stair set doesn't have enough run up. There's a crack before the ledge. Like I know how these things go and I'm not even worried about it. Plus there's this massive crack at the bottom of the force there. So why bother? That's what I say. My face just has to be a shadow because like I said, the sun, it's so hot on thine face. So hot, I didn't wear enough sunscreen because you would need like two cups of it to, to, to lather enough, anyways, okay. So the person writing this article lives in Mobile, Alabama. I guess there, if you're gonna build an 8,000 square foot skate park, it would cost about $320,000 to actually pour the concrete. But if you use one of the prefab parks, one like this, it would only cost $256,000. You're looking at a $64,000 difference, so I can totally understand why the city's like, let's save that money, but here are the five reasons why you shouldn't save that money. And these five reasons are according to Jewel Colon, who is the owner of Wooden Heart Skate Shop in Mobile, Alabama. Number one, poured in place parks last longer with less maintenance. 
Skateboarding by its very nature heaps abuse on the obstacles as users jump, grind, and pound on the surfaces. As a result, modular parks, regardless of the material, tend to deteriorate over time. Now what's wild is that this article actually has this four minute montage that this guy filmed of just every like messed up skate park that he's been to where all the metal's coming off. I mean, it's actually really impressive how many parks this dude has found with like terrible ramps that are actually extremely dangerous for anyone. And I think any city can agree that one lawsuit would actually make up for that entire cost. Number two, poured in place parks are safer over time. Okay, that was my, that was what I was, my point. When the joints become uneven, it creates these small ledges that can catch your wheels and send the skaters flying. So you're about to go up a quarter pipe, your wheels catch, you do a front flip, you break your urethra, and if the screws become loose, you can literally have screws sticking out. And if you fall, scratch yourself on a screw, tetanus, dude. Number three, concrete is just more aesthetically pleasing. A good concrete part looks like the work of art, while a bad prefab part looks like a playground. When I first saw this point, I was like, oh, that's like way too subjective, but ah, this park doesn't really look like this city is like moving forward, right? It does kind of look like this park is in the past a little bit, but when you see a park like Roanoke. I mean, that park is ridiculous. It just makes the city look like a modern city. Number four, prefab parks assume that all skaters have the same needs. Aha. Let's take Roanoke again, for example. That park has so many different things. It pretty much has everything. So I think anyone who goes there can be happy. But a lot of the skate parks that are built like that, these plazas, do offer different types of obstacles because skateboarders over time get bored with hitting the same things. And this park has the same things that, you know, I typically like. And I can pretty much have fun skating anything but it is nice to have things change up once in a while. And number five, last but not least, the skating community is willing to raise money to chip in on a quality project. And that is usually very true. While the logistics and legal process for raising money have yet to be put into place, Colin said, the skating community in the area is willing to invest in a product it can be proud of. And I think that's amazing. Anyways, the article was amazing. Thank you for being thoughtful and writing about what I am stoked on too. I do like parks like this, but obviously any concrete park is gonna have a lot more people. That's actually why I go to skate parks like this sometimes because I want to be alone, but there is no arguing that it is not nearly as good of a park as the other ones. Actually, since I've been in Texas, what I've been more interested in is actually trying to skate street because I know people have been asking for it. You want the street clips and I've been kind of trying. Like I literally went behind a Target yesterday and you know, had a session. <laughs> Hey babe, Hi. thanks for picking me up. Come on. We've been in Fort Worth, Texas hanging out and it's just been like, it's everything that I've been wanting. When I was complaining in New York City, I know a lot of you were seeing my Instagram story like, dude, this sucks, I hate this, why is it always snowing? Like, this is what I've wanted. It is hot today, it feels so good. I could literally sleep outside if I wanted to. Yes, I am very happy to be living in Texas now. No, we actually are not moved into our new place yet. The storm broke the elevator in our new building, so we've just been living out of hotels for like two weeks, and we probably will be for another two weeks. It's not the ideal situation, but at least it's not snowing, and at least I can go skate, and at least my car is gonna be fixed today. Remember when I, you know, hit it on something. Yeah, just living up to the stereotype of uh, Asians being bad drivers, unfortunately. But uh, let's get this switch variable flip nose. Pass. So I did not land any of those tricks. It got a little too windy. People started coming in the park and I felt guilty. So I kind of took my camera down, put it away, went home and just completely crashed. So I felt a little guilty that I tried so hard on the beginning tricks that I really didn't get any more tricks for you humans. So you know what, let's go on a little adventure. I gotta be out anyways, because I always do like a little exercise Korean lesson via audio. And I was like, let's get some tricks while I'm out and about. <laughs> Okay, so I've literally already gotten kicked out, but they said I could stay on the sidewalk. Finally! I've literally skated like two miles. All right, let's try to skate this.
exaggerating half real I can't believe how freaking dead I am it's been like six hours I'm just like so tired yay but today I went like two miles pretty much found just this and then really I mean this was awful but I was like oh it's still kind of fun trying to figure it out luckily the metal actually grinded which is cool but on that note I just I gotta dip out every Tuesday and Thursday for a new video on this channel I definitely am going to uh, have a little more structure in Thursday's video because I want you guys to see uh, Fort Worth and all it's worth, beauty, whatever, which I feel like you got to do today a little bit. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're on the way up to a million. Stoked. Very stoked. All right, I'm heading out. Take care. Progress daily and keep killing it.